Another flow measuring device is the pitot tube or pitot-static tube. It is known as both of these names. Um, this is a very intelligent piece of device and very simple. I would say probably the simplest of all uh, we have used before to measure flow. So the pitot tube is used basically first is measure the velocity. It measures velocity and then we can convert it to uh, flow because we know the equation flow rate is velocity times the um, cross-sectional area of the pipe where the flow is um, happening so if we know the velocity of the fluid and then this cross-sectional area then we can calculate the flow rate so let me show you how a pitot tube um, works and how it looks like so imagine that this is the uh, flow the pipe where we have flow uh, going on so if I try to draw the velocity profile it's gonna look something like this uh, let me just draw it and then I'll explain so when the fluid is flowing through this pipe as you can tell the particle that touches this wall has a zero velocity so the velocity at the wall is zero and the highest velocity would be at the middle so this is where the velocity is max so the velocity profile will look something like this so it's going to be zero at the wall and it will increase at the middle so in the fluid now think about this so we understand that velocity at the wall is zero, velocity at wall at zero, and the max in the middle. Now look at this. If I place a manometer here, a small, it's filled with water, the air is flowing through that. So this is a manometer. And I have a hole here. So the, so when the fluid is flowing this way, um, it has pressure everywhere so according to Pascal law the pressure inside this pipe if we ignore the small losses they will be same so when it pressurizes the manometer fluid because you have high pressure here let's say the atmosphere ha has less pressure so it will create a pressure difference assume that that is the pressure uh, difference now because um, there is no velocity here at the wall because the velocity is zero. Uh, this this pressure difference is called stat uh, static pressure. So P S. Uh, so this pressure difference is the static pressure difference or I height of S. Now, if I have another manometer, let's say set up a manometer like this, connect in the middle like that so I have a manometer here flow is coming this way now at this point I have both I have this fluid pressure inside the tube also I have velocity so I'll have more displacement of the manometer fluid let's say this is the amount of displacement by the manometer so this is the pressure that has both dynamic pressure, the velocity head, and the static head. So we can say the total pressure difference or um, the total height difference, T, A is T. So total pressure at this point is basically because of the velocity head or velocity pressure, the dynamic pressure plus the static pressure. So now let's say convert this. So we can measure this A is T and then also the static head so we can say here uh, p equal gamma h gamma is the this is for manometer fluid because it's the manometer fluid height change and then the total height change by this and then the dynamic head we can write half rho v square plus this um, static pressure uh, gamma of manometer fluid times the static uh, change of height if I solve for velocity I'll get square root of 2 uh, gamma of manometer fluid 
times the height of total height minus the static height divided by the uh, fluid density. Now this fluid density is the fluid inside the pipe. So this rho is inside the pipe. So that's the fluid density. And then the gamma of fluid, that's for the um, manometer fluid. So if you just convert it, we know that um, gamma equals rho z. So we can actually write it for rho as well. So that's going to be v is equal to just replace that gamma of manometer fluid with rho z. So we'll have 2 rho of manometer fluid z uh, and then ht minus hh divided by the uh, rho of the fluid that is flowing inside the pipe. So the density or gamma, their fluid property, G is a constant. We can measure HT and HS, so we can calculate the velocity. Now, once we know the velocity, then we can uh, we can calculate the area, cross section area of this pipe, and then flow is velocity times the area. Now, let me show you one more uh, way of. Uh, measuring the pressure difference. Now a lot of times electri electronics devices are used. So there is a thing called piezoelectric material. So which is a kind of like a pressure transducer. It is a pressure transducer, not kind of like. So imagine that I have a tube that is connected like this. So this is um, so flow is coming this way. So Instead of a manometer fluid, let's assume that right here, I set up a piezoelectric material, which basically works as you compress, as you incre as the pressure increases, the voltage, it generates some voltage. So we can electronically measure the pressure difference delta P, which is basically the um, dynamic pressure of the um, so related dynamic pressure because the static pressure will be cancelled out. So you got a static pressure PS here. Pressure is everywhere. So there PS, PS, so everywhere. So this pressure difference, if you connect this like, like this, so you can directly measure the pressure difference. Then velocity would be, and this, this is of course for the fluid. Velocity would be square root of 2 delta P. Uh, divide by um, rho of the fluid that is flowing inside the pipe. So you can measure using an electronic device the velocity. So pitot tube is, you could easily measure the velocity or after measuring the velocity, you could measure the flow as well once you calculate this cross-sectional area. Um, there are, I would say, at least 50, 60 pitot tubes set up in any aeroplane. So you will see a bunch of pitot tubes there measuring velocity. So um, they have huge application in the lab, in the industry, aeroplanes, buses everywhere. You want to measure the pr velocity or flow, that's probably the uh, one of the easiest way to do it.